In this video, we'll continue our XAF to MAUI integration. I'll show you how to shape business data with the reports module, and with the help of our authenticated web API, we'll send them to our MAUI application. If you watched the previous videos in this series, you should already be familiar on how we can create authenticated endpoints and how to consume them from MAUI. First, you can always check out the extensive XAF documentation for help. So I'll go to the search page and find the reports module documentation. Here we can see that we need a predefined static report, which is kind of a design time template. Our end users can modify it later at runtime, but in this case, we can use it as is. The article details on how to create the report, what data source types are supported, how to configure the object type and bind the report fields to the object properties. how to use a module updater to dispatch those design time artifacts to the runtime, and finally, how to print the report without displaying it or export it as a PDF. I want to remind you here that you are watching a video on our Secured Web API and its features. This is a free web API offer for anyone. It includes basic CRUD operations, which I discuss in other videos. The reports integration and many other features are included in the paid subscription. In this video, we're using version 22. Let's see what the XAF team has in store for us in this version. Here's the What's New page that has the reports module support. I see there are two build and endpoints, the download by key and the download by name. I could use them to send my report to the MAUI application, and I can test how they work in the Swagger UI. Pretty cool. There's also endpoints we can use for data auditing. There's also support for the file attachment module with the download stream built in endpoint. Endpoints for data validation. non-persistent object endpoints, and web API specific unit test infrastructure. Wow, there's a lot of great stuff packed in this release. So let's dive right in. I'll switch over to Visual Studio to the solution we worked in the previous videos. First, we need to register the reports module. I'll do it in a Blazor server project, which is the authorization manager I built in the previous video. Registrations are in the startup.cs. I'll register the reporting services and the reporting module where I will set the type that is used to store them in the database to reports data v2. I also have to create a DB set for this type in my entity framework DB context. The Entity Framework DB context lives in the Platform Agnostic module, which is a common dependency for all Win, Web API, and Blazor projects. Similarly, because we want to access the report from both our Blazor and Web API projects, we should use the new item wizard to create the report here. I'll go with the blank layout as per the documentation. Here is the blank template, and now I'll add a collection data source. Then set its object type name to my post entity framework object. Now I can use the field list to drag and drop data fields. And after I spent five minutes to beautify this report, I end up with this layout. Now go to the Blazor module to use a built in module updater to save this report template to the database. I create the updater and add a predefined report with the name post report. Okay, we're ready to start the Blazor application and send the template to the database. I log in as admin and navigate to the reports menu where I run my post report. Here they are, the two post articles we created in the previous videos. Now my report is in the database, so I can write a web API endpoint to get it from there, export and send it over to the MAUI application. However, you remember that we use the admin account to log into this Blazor authorization manager. This is the reason we are able to actually see the report list. Other users like our post editor and viewer users won't be able to see the reports v2 object we configured for report persistence. 
Let's fix this by editing the default role. The editor and viewer users are contained in this role. So let's create a new type permission. And all we need to do is allow read, write, create, and delete for the reports type. Now back to Visual Studio for the web API stuff. Next is the web API endpoint. And although, as per what's new page, there are build and endpoints we can use, I'll demo how you can roll out your own version. Let's head to the web API project and to the custom endpoint controller. I'll add a get report endpoint. First, I need to inject the export service. Then load and configure the report from the database. Finally, export it and stream it over the wire. In order to test this endpoint, I will start the Swagger UI. First, I'll authorize the editor user. Copy the response body. And authorize and paste it here. Now let's locate the Get Reports endpoint. Execute it. And download the actual PDF to see how it looks. Now I want to take a moment to discuss the built-in report endpoints. They are generated along with the XAF New Solution Wizard when you create a web API project. So really fast. I create a new web API project using the wizard and I add all current support modules. And under the API reports folder, inside the reports controller, there are the two download by key and download by name endpoints. They are more sophisticated than my own version. They allow report parameters, criteria, and export target. However, for the purposes of this video, I'll use my own custom version. Now back to my working solution. Everything looks great, so we're ready now to move to the MAUI side to consume this endpoint. But first, I'll start the MAUI application to refresh our memory and plan our next steps. I log in as editor, and at this point, the MAUI application, with the help of the endpoints we created in previous videos, authenticates and displays the post article list. I'll add a Shape It button next to Add to allow the editor user to download their report. Back to Visual Studio where I locate the items page. Here is the Add button. I'll duplicate it, rename it, and bind it to the Shape It command. Now let's head to the items view model to implement the command. First, I declare it. And then in the constructor, I grab my iDataStore service and point the command to its not yet implemented shapeit method. Next, I move to the iDataStore interface to declare this method. And now to the web API service to implement the method. Now I'll get the report bytes from the get reports endpoint I created before. I'll use the same authenticated HTTP client I used in previous videos. Next, I'll write the bytes to disk inside the app data directory. Then create and configure an activity to use the default Android viewer to display my PDF.
Finally, I'll start this activity. Once we configure the Android environment, we should be ready to go. So let's move to the Android manifest. I add these lines that'll help my method write and locate the file on disk. We also need to apply the following three permissions. And I need the following lines in the provider underscore paths.xml. I start the MAUI application and authorize my editor user again. And now we have the shape it button right here next to add. And if I click it, the default Android viewer shows my report that I pulled from my secured web API endpoint. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please comment below. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified whenever we release new content. Thanks for watching and thank you for choosing DevExpress.